The Springbok squad has been named for the Rugby Championship 2022, folks. It's pretty steady as she goes. We'll go over that in just a tick. Uh, a couple of question marks around a couple of players, uh, the fixtures list, and you guys can let me know your thoughts. The squad's actually been out for a little while, but my voice has been uh, kind of struggling with some kind of infection, but uh, seemed to be coming right. So, um, yeah, how's the Springbok squad looking? Like I said, pretty steady. Same hookers and Dweber marks in Bunambi. Kind of no complaints from me there. Uh, I do hope Dweber gets a wee bit more game time. Because uh, I think we know all about marks in Bunambi at this point. But I've been saying that for a wee while. Um, mainly because if you get an injury long term to either of the main two guys. You will need Dweber coming into a World Cup. Well, you'd like him to have a bit more game time than he's had. I think he's only on two caps. So, yeah. Otherwise, I think you'd be pretty satisfied. There, props to Toy, Kitsoff, Koch, uh, Malkheba, Mkunu, uh, Inche, and Inyakane. Same, same. No changes. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Um, you guys are pretty stacked for props in South Africa. I know certainly in New Zealand, as there are kind of question marks raised about the effectiveness of the Ford pack. Um, we kind of look at your props and go, mm, we could use a couple of those guys, but um, yeah, I don't think there's any any real complaints about that lot. I've seen some people try. I've seen some people on Facebook, I shouldn't go on there, uh, questioning the likes of Franz Malheba. I mean, geez, man, the guy can scrum. So there you go. Uh, Locks, Diaka, Itzabeth, Morat, Nokia, Mostert, if he's lock or loose forward, and then Ori, same, same, man, no changes, nothing, nothing really newsworthy here, um, I guess, as we get into the squad, there will be uh, some question marks, particularly with one of the backs who's been omitted, about the kind of age of the squad, or the experience, but you got to remember, Mkunu the prop, Dweba the hooker, uh, Morat, Nokia, these guys, even Marvin Ori, are still kind of single digit cap guys, so, I wouldn't say they've kind of... And like, you know, Nokia's 23, Marat's 24, uh, Mkunu's 23. I know Dweber's like 26, which is still pretty young. But um, yeah, this is not like a, a particularly old squad. I think it's older than the Wallabies squad by an average age of a couple of years. But um, yeah, I, I do like the fact that they've, they've kept largely... Uh, some of the guys who are um, the kind of inexperienced guys in the squad. And uh, loose forwards, Peter Steff, uh, Elstout, Fouri, Colisi, Lowe, Roos, Smith, Visa, and the addition, one of the guys on the board, uh, is Big Thor, Dwayne Vermeulen. So um, his return is kind of at the expense of, uh, of Marcel Kutsia, who in himself is a relatively experienced campaigner. You know, he's in his 30s, so... Um, I find it kind of hard to complain about the return of Dwayne Vermeulen. I mean, the guy's 35, but when he plays, he still looks like he's all about it, doesn't he? So, um, very secure, I would say, more so than Visa under high balls, which has kind of been the role of, uh, of Visa in that Springbok setup with the number eight, basically to take some of those high kicks. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sure Visa will, will benefit from having the likes of Big Dwayne around. It's obviously unfortunate for Marcel Kutz here to be out, but as I said, the return of Dwayne Vermeule, it's kind of hard to complain too much. You're replacing a 31-year-old with a 35-year-old. So it's not like they've cut one of the young guns. They've kept the likes of El Riklo and Evan Rus there. So mm, uh, I think the four-pack looks pretty tidy, personally. But uh, others will, um, will ask questions. Obviously, a bunch of guys who miss out on selection. That's just the way she goes. But given the squad did pretty well uh, against Wales, you know, when they, they change things up, I don't think it's kind of the time for real wholesale changes. But I think there is a uh, an indication from the Springboks management that they are keen to still kind of build a bit of depth. Because, um, yeah, they didn't get that much of a chance to do it in the previous year. So they're, they've certainly got that on the agenda from what I've seen from them. Uh, in 2022. Uh, backs wise, Faf de Klerk, Jaden Hendricks, uh, Herschel Yankees, Corbus Reinach, and Grant Williams are your halfbacks. That's five of them. Although there is a bit of a question mark about Corbus 
and that he needs to get medical clearance from uh, Montpellier. I think he uh, he had an injury for his uh, for his shoulder, and they need to get the go ahead from his club before he can get any game time. Uh, that's a remarkable number of, of number nines to be taken. Uh, it was interesting them to see, uh, basically to give Jaden Hendricks a, uh, a go in that deciding game against Wales. I'm pleased to see it. That's the kind of pressure game that he's going to need uh, to have that kind of experience under his belt. And as, I mean, um, Coach Nidaba said it himself, like, faff, we already know what he can do. So there's um, less to be gained from him kind of playing in that deciding test as a starter anyway. So, uh, yeah, how those kind of pieces fit into the puzzle if Corbus does get his medical clearance um, is an interesting question mark as to what the pecking order is. I'm going to put it out there that Grant Williams is probably at the bottom of the pecking order and Faf is at the top. And then the other three guys, it maybe depends on who the opposition is or uh, how they want to manage things. But, um, yeah, it's certainly an interesting uh, selection to have five guys and then uh, number 10s you got uh, Yankees and uh, and Pollard with uh, a couple of utility guys in the back so I mean Elton Yankees didn't exactly set the world alight when he played earlier in the year or well, earlier in the series but um, by coach Niedaba's own words he's not had really any game time at all so yeah, man, it's it's a tough one because you guys have got a bunch of guys who have been playing really well for their clubs um, but can't seem to get a call up the likes of Libok or uh, Smith and Co. So um, Husson as well, but um, I know Husson's had a long time out injured. But anyway, um, those, are, those are your two tens. That's the one area I think if Andre Pollard went down, Mm, I think that's a little bit of a concern. Midfield, Armdale, Linda, Esther, Hayes, and Creel. Uh, steady as she goes, no changes. Colby, Mapimpi, Arantza, Halant, LaRue, Willemsa, and Franz Stein are the rest of the backs. So, the the big name that's missing there is Afalele Fussy, isn't it? So, um, I, I'm yet to really meet online many Springboks fans who are like, I wish uh, Fussy wasn't in the squad. But there's genuinely a lot of excitement about that guy and a wish for him to get more game time. But he's thus been limited to um, to kind of training with the squad and like I think three caps. And uh, has he had any games at fullback? I know he's played on the wing. I think there's a desire to see that guy uh, at fullback at some point. But um, yeah, he's the man who faces the, the chop, unfortunately. But... Um, you do get front steam returning. And I know uh, people will say he's getting a bit old, he's a bit slow, but I mean, the guy's got a 60 meter boot and uh, you don't get much more experience than a double World Cup winner. So yeah, it's tough. But I mean, as I said, you've still got Aronsa, who's, uh, who's one of the youngsters. Halant's kind of back in the mix after a bit of time out in the wilderness. Damien Willems uh, seems to be the next cab off the rank to fill Villy's shoes if uh, the fullback jersey is going to pass on to someone else, so I guess Fussy is just going to have to wait for now. But um, we're going to have to trust in the coaches for that one. Uh, there is a note about Colby with his broken jaw. He's apparently not going to be available till September, so he'll probably miss about the first half of the series. Um, my voice is about to go, so I'll wrap it up. Uh, the coach did say that uh, Dwayne and Franz are both experienced players, and um, they're going to bring... Uh, valuable traits to the team and uh, it's disappointing for Afalele and Marcel but they were limited on how many players they could select fixtures list two home game against a wounded all black side are they going to be dangerous or is it kind of a time where they're ripe for the picking uh, two away games against the Wallabies and then home well, away and home against the Pumas <coughs> excuse me so um, yeah like I said, it's uh, it's a pretty steady as she goes squad. Two additions and the experienced guys, two guys cut. One of the more experienced guys in terms of age with Kutsia and then one of the youngsters in Fussy. And then uh, question marks around Colby and Reinach as to when they will be clear. At least approximately, I guess, half the comp for, um, for Cheslin. But we will see. You guys let me know your thoughts on the squad. Uh, as I said, it's not real um, earth-shattering stuff in terms of the changes. 
a couple of the experienced guys back. And uh, yeah, it is going to be interesting to see if they continue with this uh, kind of squad A, squad B thing for different uh, games. Maybe a different squad plays travels to Australia than the one that plays at home. That will be interesting to see. But anyway, or maybe they do the same thing uh, with one squad traveling to Argentina, one squad kind of remaining home like they've done in the past with the squad that traveled to New Zealand. Anyway, interesting times. You guys let me know your thoughts and uh, I'll talk to you guys again soon. See you later.